I'm Danielle Smith. Uh, talking today about a topic that is it's a tough one, and mainly because it taps into one of my ultimately greatest fears as a parent, trying to get help for a sick child or a sick family member, knowing in your gut that there is something wrong and being told by the professionals, the doctors, the nurses, and the emergency rooms, the hospitals, that everything really and truly is just fine, when in fact it's not. Uh, there is a story in the New York Times today about a 12-year-old boy from New York by the name of Rory Staunton. And back in March, Rory was playing basketball in his school gym. He dove for the ball. He cut his arm open. The next day, on a Thursday, because that's Wednesday night, on a Thursday, he was feverish. He was complaining of pains in his leg. He was vomiting. Parents took him to the doctor, and they also ended up going to the ER, and it seems that, based on the article, that all the doctors agreed that he had an upset stomach, and he was dehydrated, so he got fluids, and he got Tylenol, and they ultimately sent him home. Now, the Stauntons, because they have every intention of being an advocate for their son, and they really want to make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen to any other family, they, it seems, have turned over their Rory's medical records to this reporter for the New York Times. So talking the article, it seems that by the time Rory was sent home from the ER, the bacterial infection that, he, that ended up killing him three days later is was already in his system, was already starting to take hold because he ended up dying of toxic shock. Um, he was septic, basically severe septic, severely septic. This type of thing frightens me on so many levels. Uh, number one, uh, to lose a child. Uh, but I've actually dealt with something similar uh, in my own situation. My husband was always one of those people who firmly believed that if a doctor tells you it is so, it is so. Uh, doctors know best, they go to school, they're brilliant, they're trained for this, and if they tell you you're fine, you're fine. But eight years ago, actually this week, when I delivered my daughter, my daughter, um, the pregnancy, everything was fine. Delivery was actually fine until the end. I hemorrhaged and afterwards was quite sick. And even though I kept complaining of pain for a couple of hours and I kept sending my husband out, all the nurses would say is, it's fine, it's just because of the hemorrhaging, you're at seizure level for morphine, we can't give you anything else. But I kept complaining very loudly. And I finally said, will someone please look? Uh, and when the nurses did, her reaction was actually vocal and physical. She said, oh my God. Because it turned out that I had developed an internal hematoma that was making itself visible to the naked eye and I needed emergency surgery right then. My husband is now a very firm believer in being an advocate for yourself and for your family. Although doctors are brilliant and they do go through so much medical training, I don't believe that it makes them infallible. I have to go with my gut. I have ignored directions from the pediatrician's nurse's line when I have thought something was wrong with my children and they told me they were sure it was going to be fine. And I love our pediatrician. I would rather be the mom that the doctors, you know, snicker about behind their back, like, she's overreacting, she's just a crazy mom, than be in the situation where the Stauntons are right now. I can't even imagine. Are you good at advocating for yourself, and have you always believed that you should? Have you experienced something like this and are aware that it's important to go with your gut? You know the difference between your child having something severely wrong and having a headache. You know the difference between a stomach ache and something potentially worse. Do you trust your gut enough?